All right, on today's Food is Medicine, we're continuing our food politics series. Krista Orecchio, clinical nutritionist at The Whole Journey, is here. And we're actually going to introduce you to a food activist in just a second who single-handedly got the biggest manufacturers to change the ingredients in the most popular foods on store shelves. Before we get to, uh, to that, Krista, we want to talk a little bit about the reaction that you got to last week's segment. We had a scientist come on who basically said, GMOs are fine. He wasn't worried about it. He uh, would eat them with no problem, give them to his kids. A molecule is a molecule is a molecule. Yeah. It's the other side of what you believe. And you actually got some backlash. Tell me about that. Sure. Well, we've, we've got a, a big community with the whole journey who is fighting for a cleaner, healthier food supply. And so they have really strong beliefs about mm -hmm. how GMOs are bad. And I got some really great emails back from biochemists and their perspective. And so the dialogue continues. I mean, I've been anti-GMO since I've heard about them and known about them, and, and I have clinical experience that people, when you pull them off of GMOs, mm -hmm. they get healthier. But my intention in bringing him on is, is to build the bridge mm -hmm. with two sides that really disagree vehemently. How do, you, how do you find a way to meet in the middle? And so I'm glad he came on, and I'm glad that the dialogue started. And, and I think it just needs to continue. I mean, this is food politics. So we have to find a way to work together. Absolutely. If nobody's speaking and everybody's just arguing, then where are we going to get? Exactly. And so it's nice to be able to open a forum to talk about these things, sure. find a solution. OK, we're going to go now to Vani Hari. She's a really passionate investigative health writer and also the creator of Food Babe. She's on Skype right now. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh -huh. Great to have you here, Vani. We are super, super excited. Erica and I were just talking about the traction that you made with Kraft. Because for me as a nutritionist, I've got to get people off of these chemicals if I want to get them healthier. So tell us how you work with these big companies and get them to pull these artificial ingredients out of their products. Well, um, you know, I've been really blessed because um, my voice has been amplified by thousands and thousands of people, actually millions of people who are now logging on to foodbabe.com and joining me in this fight against um, the food companies who are putting so many different man-made chemicals in our food that just don't belong there. And people are becoming awake. And I think that is one of the the main um, points of why I was able to get Kraft to remove these artificial food dyes. You know, not only did we have 350,000 signatures on a petition, but I was able to shift the marketplace. When you're looking at competitors of Kraft, like Annie's, go up in sales, mm -hmm. um, you know they're hitting the bottom line of Kraft, the, the consumer out there. And so it's really important to realize that when you can shift the way people vote with their dollars and, and buy things at the marketplace, you really have the, the opportunity to change the world. And I know I could have never done it without what I call the Food Babe Army, the people who not only care about what they're eating, but they care about what everyone's eating in America and in Canada even and Bonnie. around the world. And so they're willing to go and not only sign a petition, but they're willing to go to a company's Facebook page and leave a message or a comment or call the headquarters and voice their concern. And Bonnie. I know that um, Kraft had to listen to all of us because when we bind together, we really can change the world. You're not kidding uh, when you say she's passionate. Um, I know. Bonnie, I want to ask you specifically, <laughs> what are some of the ingredients that are in our food that we're consuming all the time that you feel like really shouldn't be there in the first place? Well, definitely artificial food dyes, and that, that was the case of Kraft. You know, there's been studies after studies that show that they're linked to hyperactivity in children. In Europe, they have to use a warning label that says, may cause adverse effects on activity and attention in children on any product that uses artificial food dyes. And, you know, they are linked to allergies, asthma, skin rashes as well, and contaminated with carcinogens. So there's no reason, there's no benefit other than the bottom line of companies, them making more money to use this uh, chemical petroleum-based 
ingredient in our food. And so I'd like to see the eradication of artificial food dyes, and I think it's going to start very soon, especially with Kraft's big move. And I'd like to see M&Ms do that. I'd like to see it across all food, especially the food geared towards children. But then there's like these other crazy ingredients that are in our food that are banned in other countries. One um, that's a big example is something that's found in almost every whole wheat bread on the market, including Subway's nine grain bread, and it's called azocarda carbonamide, azodicarbonamide. I had to say that twice because it's such a handful of the word. But this thing is linked to um, lung issues and workers. There's no reason why we should be putting the workers who create our bread at, at risk. And that's why it's banned in Europe, Australia. And if you get fined, use, you get actually fined if you use it in Singapore and you can be put into jail. And so this is a serious ingredient. It needs to be completely eliminated from the American food supply, from the world food supply. If it's causing issues and linked to these health issues, we shouldn't be eating it. Vani, what about, uh, I, it's crazy, I agree with you, what's happened to our food supply. And for me, what about our, our meat? We talk about healthy meat a lot on food as medicine, and we just got, um, we just got an article that we read about chicken in China. And now what we're doing is we're, we're processing it here, sending it to China to be cooked and processed, and then they're sending it back which to me is crazy. I mean, I'm trying to get my clients to eat pasture-raised chicken. So if that's okay with the USDA, I mean, what do we do? How do we shift that for food safety? Well, you know, the thing is, is we have to take control back of our food. We're completely outsourcing our food. Like we outsourced the technology to India and we outsourced, you know, um, our food on a daily basis to restaurants. Like we need to take back control and the USDA needs to take back control of our meat supply because we don't know the regulations that are happening in other countries. And we know for a fact that there's all sorts of contamination issues with Chinese fish and other things that come from China. And so we need to be able to control our own food supply. And I just don't agree with sending the things we eat all, all completely overseas and then bringing it back for us to eat. We should be yes. eating things that come straight from the ground, come from Mother Earth, and we should be cultivating that in the United States. Bonnie, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We really appreciate it. <laughs> Great to have Absolutely. you here. Thank all you. All right, take care. By the way, Krista offers online coaching on her website, The Whole Journey. We've actually posted a link on our website. Just go to Fox 5 dot com and click on that scene on tab. All right, Raul, let's send it back over to you now.